So one of the things that we need to know how to do from the command line is how to move or copy files in Linux. So um, we're here, if we print working directory like we looked at the last video, we're here in our home directory and we're going to change directory to the downloads folder. And here we are, we're in the downloads folder. And you can see that's where we are. Now when it comes to moving files, uh, it's it's very simple to use the GUI, and most of the time, that's probably what you'll do. You can do things like making a new folder, and you can call it uh, this folder, and you know you can just uh, um, you know put something in there. Like we can just drag this and put it in there. Uh, but if we didn't do that. how could we move things around and do what we need to do so I'm gonna make a few files real quick with the command called touch and I'll call this file one dot log touch file two dot log touch file three dot log and then we will make a directory called dir1 and make dir called dir2 so, you can see all these files have been created. Now, touch is just a command to make a file. It reaches out to see if a file is there. If the file is there, it doesn't do anything. If the file is not there, it makes that file. So, and make dir is a way to make a directory. So, um, we want to move the file 1, 2, and 3 into directory 1. So, we are going to mv we're gonna move those files. Now move is not a copy, that means like drag and drop somewhere else. So we're gonna move file and uh, if we say one dot log to uh, the directory, remember we talked about this dot meaning where we are now, and dir one, right? So now file one went away and if we look in dir one, there it is. So that's how we move something. That's a simple way. Now we also have, we can move file uh, anything that starts with file and put that in dir1. Notice it took those and put them into directory1. Now we can also change directory to be in dir1 and we see all of our files are there and we can copy those files now we're gonna make a duplicate of that file so the file is gonna stay here and there's gonna be a new copy where we want it to be with CP and we copy and uh, let's do anything this is the wildcard of asterisk anything that ends with log right we're gonna copy everything that ends with log and we're going to put it Remember, dot dot means to go back a directory you can see my previous videos for help on that and we're going to put it into directory number two. So we put it in there. So now we look. Dir1 still has file one, file two, file three. Dir2 has file one, file two, file three. So that allows us to copy and to move something. So um, you don't have to be in a directory to get something from a directory. So for instance, we could remove, remove a file, right? We're going to delete a file. We're going to remove it put it in the trash right and we're gonna remove um, anything dot log well we'll just remove file 2 file 2 dot log alright so now we look there's only file 1 and file 3 in dir1 because that's where we are now you can copy from another directory you can say go back to the previous folder with dot dot and get into directory 2 and grab file 2 dot log and put it right here. And there we go. So that uh, copy command, that CP allows us to copy something. Now there's a lot more that goes into this. I'm just trying to cover some of the basics for those that are really, really new at Linux and you're trying to get used to how to work the command line while you're building Android. So the copy command, there's a lot of other really cool things you can do, like recursive directories, stuff like that. But I just want to talk about the basics. So you can copy a file from one place to another, which is as if you, you know, copy and then you paste it somewhere else in the GUI. 
or you can move which is when you grab something and drop it in somewhere else so MV for move CP for copy and that's the primary ways that you're going to end up um, putting something in one place or another so I want to talk about one more thing when it comes to files Linux Windows can do this as well but Linux uh, capitalizes on the ability to uh, to do this so what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove uh, file 3.log and we're gonna make a link okay so if we uh, um, type LN and we type help uh, it'll give us all the information for how to make a link from one place to another so what we want to do is we want to um, make a link from a file that's in directory 2 into directory 1 and what this does is this link makes it as if the file is really there in directory 1 but it's not in directory one is actually just kind of like a pointer that says hey I'm pretending to be in this folder but I'm really over in directory two but anything I change in here is going to change in in both so for instance right if I'm in directory one right now I open this file dot log and in the text editor I say hi and then I save that well if I go to directory two and I go to file 2.log, open it up. There's no hi in there because I didn't put it in there. So I'm going to save howdy in this one. So in both directory 1 and directory 2 is this file 2, but they don't have the same thing in there. But what if you need a file that you want to keep in one place, so you only have to edit it once, but it's going to be read in multiple places? and this is important for building like an Android where you need something to be in one spot but you're gonna have it read in multiple places while it's building different parts and pieces and so you can make what's called a linked file so we're gonna make our link so we're here in directory one when we see we have file one and file two and we're gonna make a link to the directory two file three and we're gonna put it right here so um, what we do is we make LN for link we're going to do a soft link. Now there's different kinds of link and I don't want to get too deep into the mud but we're just making a soft link in this case and we're going to say what the uh, what the target is and we're going to say that's in dir2 and it's going to be file3.log that's the target that's what we want a link of and we're going to put it here and we're going to call it file3.log log. So now if we look in dir1 we see file3.log and notice it has this arrow on it. There's something different about this. If we type lslah we see file3.log is this cyan color right here or cayenne however you want to pronounce that and it starts with an L for link. All right, And it's saying this file3 points to notice this points to dir2 file3.log. So here's what's great. If I go to directory2, file3.log, I'm going to open it up and I'm going to say this is file3. I'm going to save that and I'm going to close this. Alright, no tricks here. Go back to directory1, we open file3.log and it says this is file3. Now I'm going to say I edited it after opening the link. I'm going to save that. I'm going to close it. Now I go back to dir2, file 3, and here it is. It's been changed. It's been changed in both places because it's actually only one file that's getting edited in both places. So this is really, really handy and it comes up a lot when you're building Android where you're going to have linked files. Um, this, uh, this isn't something necessarily that you'll do a lot of from the command line but it's something that you need to be aware of exists in your uh, Linux world as we're trying to build uh, Android and the things that we're doing there so hopefully uh, learning how to copy move files and link files was useful to you um, one thing to note if we go to directory one and we delete this file 3.log 
I'm just going to delete it. Right? It went to the trash. We can say ls. Is it there? No, it's gone. We go back to our downloads to directory 2 and the file 3.log is still there. Because it was a soft link, it only pointed to it. Deleting the link didn't delete the main file. Now let's make that link again. All right, and this time I'm going to go to directory two, and I'm going to delete the original file. Now, if we go back to directory one, and I try to open this file three dot log, it says it doesn't exist, and it's red now because the file that it points to doesn't exist anymore. Now, if we go back and we find our trash and we restore from trash file 3.log oh, not that one, this one restore from trash the file 3.log we go back to directory 2, now it's been restored and so it's there again and we look now it points to where it's supposed to because we restored that from the trash or if we made a new file for it but uh, I wanted to see how links could be broken so this would be a broken link and how also links can be deleted and it doesn't affect the master file that it's pointing to. Um, this, uh, this can be different though if it's not a soft link. We did a soft link, there's also what's called a hard link. And so if you have a hard link and you delete it, uh, you will actually delete both the um, one that you have here and the one that it's linked to. So. Be careful with links. Make sure that uh, you understand what you're going to do if you're going to delete a link to a file. And uh, make sure that you know uh, what the ramifications of that will be. But if you have something that's a link and it's broken like this and it's red, um, sometimes you'll see this when you're copying files, uh, particularly if you're copying files through a Windows um, hard drive at some point. Uh, because of things like file permissions and links and stuff like that don't work in that environment, then when you copy them, they actually can end up having broken links and not working at all. So um, if you're having trouble building something, you're like, boy, the file 3 is there, but it says it's not, go take a look at it and make sure it's not a link to a file that's broken. Um, sometimes you'll see that when you're building Android. So hopefully... Um, that was uh, that was useful to you. Uh, one final note about copying through a Windows uh, drive or computer. Windows does not recognize these um, well I shouldn't say does not. A lot of Windows file systems are not able to recognize these ext uh, 2, 3, and 4 uh, Linux permissions or the Linux permissions that you can find uh, in NFS or uh, the various uh, different um, hard drive uh, what's the word I'm looking for a uh, it's not an operating system a hard drive file system thank you file system that you're looking for, for uh, may not have these permissions and most windows use like NTFS which does not have the same kind of permissions uh, or if it's using FAT32 or FAT16 so if you copy this file for instance file1.log over to a windows machine it's going to lose its permissions and when it loses those permissions and then you copy it back to a Linux machine so you're using like a, a you know an external USB drive to copy the files when you copy that you're going to lose these permissions and it's going to get new permissions based on the user who's copying it at the time and this might be a problem especially for things like links notice that it has read write execute but then if you copy it as a regular user it's just going to get read write read and read and so that may be a problem for you uh, in the future. So if you have to transfer files through um, a Windows system which is using a Windows file system like NTFS or FAT32 or FAT16, hopefully not FAT16 but there's possibilities, um, the best thing to do is zip the files into one place like put them together. Most of the time you can do this from the uh, GUI just by saying compress and make it into a file and you create that and now take this file which permissions are irrelevant 
and copy that file over and then copy the file to the new machine and then unzip it and it will retain all of the permissions that it had before. So something that you might see if you're moving files around a lot and not working directly with them on one machine. Anyways, hopefully that was helpful and uh, we, uh, we might take a look at a few more basic uh, Linux things when we're trying to work through um, how to build Android, but uh, just wanted to give a, a little bit of a head start for those who are just new to Linux and don't understand what exactly is all this file permissions things and these copying and moving and how this stuff works and I'm having to change directories. This is what we're doing and this is hopefully helpful to you to get started.